I was in 12th grade and we were on a field trip to Halifax, Nova Scotia and were to attend a conference there that was educational. After exploring the cove and island and such, we went back to the hotel. My cousin decided to go to a naming ceremony and me, growing up in a mainly Caucasian town, decided to go. I knew nothing of our heritage other than what I've read on paper and the like. Never partaken in any of our traditional sweat lodges. Maybe one powwow, etc. So anyway, we go and offer the traditional tobacco as a gift. A few people go before us and I'm next. I go up and kneel and it starts. A medicine man shakes his rattle and sings. I get into a lull and close my eyes. It seems I just close and open them and I couldn't believe what I was seeing. I had my eyes down and could see my white fringe blowing in a soft breeze. My moccasins are white too, a marriage day, and I'm walking beside a shore of water with the white frothy bubbly stuff splashing over my mocks. I raise my head and in the distance is a community of people hunters stretching hide and women gathering wood and children playing by the teepees. It was about 10 large ones in a collective circle. My heart felt full and I was happy. I came back to myself, I guess you'd say. The medicine man looked at me in the eye and said, you are white rolling water woman. The lady next to him said I was a grandmother turtle clan. I'm a water sign too. And I was a healer, apparently a seer too. I was fascinated and a little shook as my cousin went up to get hers. She kneeled as I closed my eyes. I seen her name. It was a beautiful black horse galloping into clouds. Her name ended up being Dark Horse That Rides Over the Clouds. I thought I told her, but recently I recanted this experience to her and she was amazed because she is a healer in our eyes. She said I never told her a thing and sometimes to this day, if I really concentrate, I can see. Some years ago, I had a very weird encounter that I was never really able to explain. The strangest thing that it did not only happen to me, but to a dear friend as well. I was in middle school. At the time, I didn't have many friends, as I was a very shy kid. I was, however, lucky enough to meet one of my dearest friends, D. We used to hang out a lot, doing nerdy stuff and enjoying video games and fantasy movies. Notice, I was bullied a lot in middle school, but D was always there for me. Over the months, we established a very strong connection, to the point we understood each other without even speaking. During summer, D invited me to his house to play some new JRPG video game, Hoshigami. While we were playing, I remember we started telling each other scary stories that actually happened to us, for which we were not really able to provide an explanation. For me, it was the first time I was able to speak so openly about paranormal facts that I'd experienced. And I believe it was the same for my friend. After many years, I don't remember the stories. I just recall that we were getting more and more terrified as we kept going. Evening came, I had to return home. Dee understood I was a little scared from the supernatural stories. So being the awesome friend he is, he offered to walk with me to my house. Dee's home was an apartment on the fourth floor of an old building. It didn't have an elevator, but it had the room for it between the stairs. Also, there was an old gigantic three right in the front of the building. So the stairs outside of the apartments were always dark and cold. While me and Dee were walking down the stairs, we were talking about Hoshigami. Dee was trying to take my mind off of the scary stories. I felt a sense of danger right on my skin, as someone was about to lunge at me. As we kept going down, I was able to feel a sense of fear growing inside me, and my heart was racing for no reason. For a short moment, I was paralyzed as I realized that there was a dark figure floating in the space where the elevator was supposed to be. I can't really describe what I saw. I just remember it looked like a Nazgul from the Lord of the Rings. It was tall, pitch black, like made of darkness. 
I don't remember if it had wings or if it was just floating, but it did have a weapon of some sort, also made of darkness. I remember that despite the figure not having discernible eyes, I felt it staring at me. I believe he was ascending from the ground and moving up in the empty space between the stairs. After being paralysed for a few moments, my body reacted on its own and I found myself running for my life up the stairs. I wasn't able to look back. I sort of knew that if I stopped, I would have died. I only stopped myself when I was back in my friend's apartment, only to find out that he was right next to me, catching his breath while his face was pale as snow. Once we could talk again, we spoke about what happened, and to my surprise, he described exactly what I saw. D also saw a dark figure floating in midair, somewhat trying to reach out for us. He also felt an immense sense of danger and ran for his life. I had to wait a couple of hours before going out, and when I did, there was no one there. I was never able to fully understand what happened that day. We still talk about it, but the memory of it becomes less and less clear. Any ideas on what entity we may have met that day? Was it just a trick of the mind? About a week or so ago, my boyfriend and I went out around 9.30, 10pm to go herping, looking for salamanders and frogs and such. We went to a path adjacent to the university I attend, popped our headlights on and went on our way. On the right side of this path is a wetland slash swampy area, and on the left side there's a pretty dense forest. Around an hour into our walk, I saw the lights. There were two of them, sort of diagonally placed from each other near the left side of the path. They were super bright and had a yellowish tinge to them. They were at least 25 feet away from us. My boyfriend noticed them too. They hung around in that spot for about 30 seconds before they darted into the forest. Much too big to be fireflies or bugs, and definitely not other people also sporting headlamps, because we kept walking and didn't pass anyone else. A few minutes later, we passed these two reflective signs. I thought that our headlamps bouncing off of them could have been the source of the lights. After that, we kept walking. About 10 minutes later, we see the lights again, but this time, further away. Same thing happens. They hung around before darting into the forest. We walked a few more minutes, but I didn't notice any more signs. It was at that point, I was hit with this cold feeling and I had a gut feeling that we should just turn around and go back to the car, which we did. Although I do wish we kept going, just to see what would have happened. Ten or so years ago, I was driving with my brother in Virginia Beach. It was late at night and we were gonna grab some food. We were the only car on the road, which wasn't abnormal due to the time of night. The right side of the road was wooded with trees, and on the left was a fence that ran parallel to the road. A giant wolf-like creature ran full speed in front of the car. It came from the right wooded area and was booking it towards the fence. This thing was at least 12 feet tall minimum. It was hunched over, running insanely fast on its back legs. The legs were bent backwards and extremely muscular. The only way I could describe it was they were bent backwards in a way that demon legs are depicted. The legs were furless, except from near the bottom where there were patches of fur. It was wearing a brown hooded cloak that was tattered along the bottom edges. The hood covered its head and midsection, leaving the legs fully exposed. Some sort of elongated snout was emerging from the front of the hood. It was square like a wolf's and had fur. The thing never turned to look at us. It was running towards the fence, jumped and cleared it. I've never seen anything jump so high. I spent the next couple of moments trying to process what I saw. I thought there was some kind of logical explanation until my brother said, did you see that? And described in detail exactly what I had seen. The only thing that differed 
was that he saw what he described as long claws emerging from the front of the cloak. Seeing this thing terrified me. Ten years later, I'm still terrified. Any ideas of what it was? The cloak and the backwards legs were something I really focused on. The cloak was cloth and I'm certain it wasn't fur or anything else. My husband seems to think what I described as a wendigo, which I'm not sure the description matches at all. It didn't have antlers, and from what I looked at, those things live way up north. He did mention that there were Algonquian-speaking people, Chesapeake tribe, living in the Virginia beach many, many, many years ago. So I'm currently 18 and my father died in September 2020 due to a heart attack. We had a very strange relationship. He was an alcoholic. He had to leave our house because of one of his episodes in which he was very violent with my mom and me. Since then, he lived far away with his mother and we tried to fix the relationship, but we couldn't. He was very aggressive with me and I needed some time to clear my mind. So we stopped talking and suddenly he died. I went to his funeral with my boyfriend. My father's side of the family didn't want to see my mother, so she had to stay at home. All that side of the family hated me and my mum for unknown reasons since I was born. So I was in a very hostile place, in a very depressive situation. Some of them insulted me and said hurtful things to me at the fucking funeral of my dead father, who I loved despite everything. Due to the circumstances, I was hopeless, crying outside the church with my boyfriend by my side. Suddenly, a random woman appeared. She wasn't there before and she wasn't part of my family. I didn't see her anywhere. And the conversation goes like this. Are you Thomas? Not my father's real name, just an example. Daughter? Isn't it? Yes. I want to say this before anyone told you hurtful things and messed up your head. What the fuck, how does she know? I mean, the normal situation in a funeral is that everybody tries to comfort everybody. Your father loved you and he wanted to fix everything with you too. I was with him at every moment in his daily life and he told me everything. He loved you so much. And it continued like that for a bit. But then my father's friends approached me and started to comfort me as they could. The woman disappeared and she never showed again. He was incinerated and she didn't appear at the ceremony. They were friends, so she's supposed to know about the ceremony. Also, they talked about the ceremony, which was in seven days after the funeral. She must have heard about it. His friend never mentioned that woman at any moment. They didn't know her. Nobody knew. So it was kind of, I don't know. But her words really comforted me and helped me to confront his death. I remember the words of that mystery woman ever since I heard them. When I was a kid, my friends wanted to do the Charlie Charlie challenge. So we went to buy some paper and two pencils in our store and play it on our local playground. Between two trees where we sat, may I also remind you of the time it wasn't windy. So we chant, Charlie Charlie, are you here? several times until I'm bored because there's no response. We also tried to get away from the paper, but again, it didn't work. So I shouted, Charlie, Charlie, are you gonna kill us? Are you here? And after a few minutes, as vividly as in my memories, I saw that the pencil moved to yes. I screamed at the top of my lungs and all of the other kids beside me started to run. And after I saw them running, I ran away from it as fast as I could. But I thought that we had to burn the paper and the pencils. So we did that, but the pencils only broke into two and they were thrown into the cash tr trash can. The same day, it was afternoon. My sister told me that I had to sleep or she will tell my mom that I didn't sleep so that I can't go outside at 3 p.m. So I went to my bedroom and before I even fell asleep, I heard background noises in my wall that someone was watching television but my sisters are asleep and we're the only ones in the house. So I checked the living room and the television is off and went to my sister's room and she's asleep. 
But when I went into my room again, I'm still hearing the TV noise. After a few minutes, the wall started vibrating like someone was banging the wall of my room. And also windows started to vibrate like someone was banging on it. So I checked my sister, she's asleep. And as I'm seeing her asleep, I saw with my own two eyes that the walls and the windows were vibrating and the doorknob is making noise. I froze at that moment. For a week, I experienced that and every morning, I woke up at exactly 10 minutes before 12 a.m. or 3 a.m. And that entire time, I feel presence of someone was watching me from the open door of my room, while the door in my room is swinging and creaking. And the chairs at the dinner table started to move, because I heard it like when you try to move a chair it sounds. All that I could do in that moment was to cover my whole body and head with a blanket until I fell asleep and wake up at six in the morning. So last year, at night past 11, I heard a baby crying. The crying was very loud considering our house is big and it was like the crying was right next to my bedroom's door. I got instant chills as I stepped out of my room and the crying became echoey like at all sides, the baby is crying. My sister heard it too and asked me who it was. It was very fucking creepy because we have no baby in the house. I still don't have a nephew. But me being practical and skeptic kind of person, I thought it was our neighbor. So I checked up my neighbor right by my window and saw that no one else was in the house. So I don't know where and whose baby was crying, so I just forced myself to sleep. A few months passed and another ghost manifested in our house, a woman. I don't know what she looks like, but I can hear, very hear her sing to my ear every night. Around two to three a.m. A lullaby of some kind, a peaceful lullaby like a lullaby that you would sing to a baby to sleep. And I don't know what she's saying, but I think it's in Spanish or Italian. But it's very possible that the lullaby I heard is Spanish because our country was colonized by Spain and the woman is maybe a ghost from the past. A few months passed. This year, it started getting a really annoying and creepy, a lullaby lady, I suspect it's her, started to mimic my mom's voice and my sister's voice. One time, my sister slept in my room and I heard her voice outside my room, like she was talking to someone on the phone. At first, I didn't get creeped out because my eyes were closed, but as soon as I opened my eyes, I saw my sister across the room sleeping and her voice can still be heard outside the room. I was scared and woke up my sister and told her if my other sister is here early, but she said that my other sister won't be here until tomorrow. Sometimes I'll hear my mom's voice calling me downstairs, but as soon as I go downstairs, my mother would always say that she's unaware that she called me or that they weren't in the house and that they're sometimes going to the market in the early morning. Every time I also say a prayer, I will hear the woman's voice screaming into my ears, resulting into ringing like that loud. One night, as I came down for dinner, I saw a guy's face in our window on our terrace but not the type of face that is skin and bone, hell no. It was like when you breathe into a glass, a fog forms as you breathe into it. And after a few seconds, it will transition to disappear. It's like that kind of manifestation. And it's forming the face of a man over and over again on the window of our terrace, appearing like breathing into it and transitioning to disappear again and again. I went down very fucking fast because of that creepy shit. I might call them the lullaby family because they might be a family, I think. I live in the woods in Northwest Ohio. My house is back about half a mile in the woods down a long driveway. And my property is surrounded by trees from each side, except for the back which has a field that alternates soybeans and corn every year. We're a few minutes away from a very small village and about half an hour out from bigger towns. I just wanted to give some background into the area before I say what happened in case that helps at all. I've had weird stuff happen before. 
I've encountered what I think are not deers. Once, there was one in my yard walking around apple trees, which isn't uncommon, but the thing was huge and ugly and it just looked wrong. There was also one next to a country road I was driving down with my friend once. A few years ago, I was dog sitting before I had a dog and I was out with the dog walking near the field and he turned around as there was a huge splash in our pond and started growling and howling. Other than that, the dog was really friendly and I'd never heard him growl before. I joked saying it was a frogman, like the Loveland frogman, but ignored it for the most part. Last year, my family got a dog of our own and he's a hound dog, so he chases and barks at everything. But sometimes he gets weird about the pond too and he'll growl and howl at it. He doesn't really growl other than that. But the incident that I came here to talk about happened a few days ago. This year is a corn year in the field behind our house, which I always hate because I can't see past the first couple rows and I've always thought it's creepy. Before crops are planted, I like to rock hound and metal detect in the field and surrounding fields, so I know the land very well. I've found Native American artifacts in the field before too, and there's a couple woods scattered throughout the fields and a big creek runs through it too. I mainly stick to the field directly behind my house because I don't want to wander out too far. The farthest out I've gone is probably no more than a mile. A couple of days ago, I was out with my dog, walking along the line of dirt between the trees in the back of my property in the field, when my dog started growling at the corn. It obviously scared the hell out of me and I was yelling at him to stop. When I was little, we would get coyotes around here too, so I figured it was a coyote. Since I didn't want myself or my dog to get hurt, I started walking back to the house, but my dog wasn't having it. He was pulling on the leash and baying and howling and losing his mind. He doesn't usually do that unless he's seen a squirrel, so the fact that he was just screaming into the corn freaked me out. We started walking again and then I heard a cat meow from the corn. I was like, oh, okay, it's just a cat, cool. But I have a cat and there's plenty of barn cats that cross our property and my dog has never lost his mind over a cat like that before. So I kept tugging on his leash and I'm like, dude, let's go, you're freaking me out. And the cat keeps meowing and getting like uncomfortably loud. It sounded like it was a lot closer than it was. And then the cat started growling, but it sounded like a big dog. Then the corn started rustling, bigger than a cat would be able to do. Luckily, at that point, I was just about to back to my yard and the growling kind of developed into what sounded like a yell or scream from a person. I was dragging my dog. My dog was growling, his hair on his back was sticking up. I was scared and shaking. It was absolutely terrifying. I went back into my house and told my family what happened and they were just like, okay, cool, whatever. But I was nearly in tears. It was scary. Again, I don't know if this is the right place to leave this story, so I'm sorry if it isn't. But those sounds have been replaying in my mind over and over and I'd love to get some explanation or something on whatever happened out there. Nothing like that has happened since. Not that I wanted to. But yeah, if anyone has any explanation or advice, please let me know. I live in northern New England. A couple of years ago, my then girlfriend and I were out for a drive late at night, probably around 1am. The roads had been mostly dead, except the occasional passing car, and it was a completely clear night. I decided I was going to get lost and just see where the road takes us, then GPS back to her place when we were tired. I'd been taking random turns for about half an hour when I came upon something odd. A car was coming towards us, but both its flash headlights were flashing. Not like high beams going on and off, more like a light bulb about to burn out. I mentioned it to my girlfriend, as I had never seen car lights do something like that before. But we shrugged it off as electrical problems and kept going. We turned left at the next stop sign, and that's when I began to notice that the porch lights of the nearby houses were doing the same thing. They dimmed and brightened in the same steady pattern of the headlights that had just passed. We took a left and the hair stood up on the back of my neck as the road ahead 
dipped into a small dark valley, a complete blind spot. As my car entered it, both of our right ears popped painfully and the smell of sulfur assaulted our noses. My headlights flooded the space. We were surrounded by forest on either side, but on the right was a driveway with a mailbox next to it. Standing to the right of the mailbox, in the tall grass was something indescribable. Some sort of hunched over slender creature a few feet taller than the box itself peering our way. From the little I can recollect, it was only very vaguely humanoid. In that moment, the only thing I remember feeling was dread and the adrenaline from my body's flight response. We were out of the blind spot as quickly as we entered and I've never seen anything like that since. The strangest thing is that the next day, I could no longer fully recollect the memory of the event, only the feelings I felt as we saw it, and the verbal descriptions both of us recounted to each other in the immediate moments after the event. I see the memory in my mind as if it's blurred out in a dark splotch, like someone spilled ink over the spot the creature was standing. My ex says the same. I don't know what could cause it to be blanked out of my head like that, but I've never had an experience like it before and everything about it unsettles me immensely. I'm not sure if anyone here has any similar experiences, but this was one of the creepiest things that's ever happened to me. Does anyone know what we could have seen? This happened about five years ago. I'm currently 25 years old. I've always had strange occurrences happen to me, and members of my family throughout my life, less so now. We've lived at multiple homes, so I usually assumed we had something to do with what was happening, more than the actual locations. Now to the actual event. I was staying home alone for that weekend. My family was going out and I couldn't go since I had to work. We're a big family, so this would actually be the first time in years I had the house to myself for two full nights and days. I usually babysat my younger siblings. Another thing to add is that I've always had a strange relationship with sleep and dreams, as I'm a heavy dreamer, but not a heavy sleeper. A lot of my encounters have been prior or during sleep. So I woke up in the middle of the night, which is very common for me. And once I'm awake, I'm up for a good while. I'm awake and just chilling on my bed. My phone is broken, so I can't check the time. All my lights are off. I'm there contemplating sleep or TV when a light comes on from within the gap of my bed and wall. It was a pale blue light and seemed to be coming from under the bed, but only on the wall side. There was no noise and I was just surprised. I thought maybe an electrical socket was going off. I was going to peer down when a small orb, probably the size of a golf ball, starts rising up from the shining light. It just rises up a bit maybe a couple feet away from my face. I haven't moved or interacted at all. And then it just comes back down the gap and the light goes off. I eventually do peer over and nothing. There was no light or any markings, not a noise and the rest of the weekend went by fine. I'm almost 99% sure that I was awake and I'm open to the idea of this having a natural explanation. Also, although I've had many encounters before, this is the only one of this nature that I've experienced. Most of my encounters have been auditory or sensory. In 1995, I was driving through Kentucky and a truck driver told me how to save two hours by getting off the freeway and taking a more direct route to my destination. Along the way, there was a sign directing people to the historic downtown. Out of curiosity, I got off the road to check it out. It looked like Main Street Disneyland sitting on the banks of the Ohio River. I was back a week later and put in an offer to purchase the museum, renamed, building an 1886 former York Wright Masonic Lodge Hall. It had three storefronts at street level, five apartments on the second floor two ballrooms on the third floor and all the spaces you expect connected with ballrooms. On the day of the closing, I was excited to explore this cavernous castle I had just bought to figure out what to do first. The only apartment available hadn't been used in decades. 
The wallpaper was hanging off the walls and sheets there was an old mid-century fold-out couch that was my bed. In my entry hall was the staircase leading up to the ballrooms. It was shut off from the apartment by a set of doors. At the top of the stairs was a 24 inch tall hallway that ran between the two ballrooms. Between the ballrooms was a staging room that accessed both rooms. It had no windows except for two small louvered windows sitting about 10 feet off the ground. When I got to the top of the stairs, I immediately sensed I was being watched through the windows. I thought to myself, it's nothing and ventured on. To make myself fear better, I went into the staging room at that point. I became convinced something was in there and decided to go back to the apartment to set up camp. I locked the doors to the ballrooms up and thought that was weird and didn't think about it. That first night, we had an electrical storm and all hell broke loose. It sounded like running and doors slamming. The doors leading to the ballrooms were banging against the hasp block. I had never experienced anything like it. After living there for a month and barely sleeping, two older women introduced themselves and asked to tour, tour the building. At the end of the tour, the women told me that the neighbor down the street, Rob, really wants to see the building as well and I should introduce myself. I did just that and took Rob on a tour. A couple of weeks passed and the women returned. They asked me if I had spoken to Rob. I said, no, why? They went on to inform me that Rob sees spirits and he saw something in the building. They didn't elaborate and told me to talk to Rob, so I did. I asked Rob what he thought of the building. He said, oh, it's great, I loved it. I said, Rob, the girls told me you saw something. He said, no, I didn't see anything. I said to Rob, if I told you where it lives, will you tell me what you saw? He said, where do you think it lives? I said, in the staging room between the ballrooms. He said, yes. I asked him, what does it look like? He said, it's like a black cloud amorphous nebulous. It's nothing and has no power, just ignore it. I asked him again, is it shapeless? He said, well, it can take the shape of a black wolf. I took Rob's advice and ignored it. And in time, it only popped up sporadically, typically during storms. Years later, I moved to Florida and I was helping my brother build his house. One afternoon, my three-year-old niece comes to me while I was working on the house and says, Uncle Jay, Uncle Jay, there's a big black wolf here and he wants to talk to you. I told her, take me to him. She took me upstairs into an empty room and says, oh, he left. I hadn't left. It was there and had come to visit. I haven't had another visit since.